There is an old, one-lane stretch of road in Northeast Ohio, known only as County Road 189. This unassuming piece of concrete is often traveled by those driving through on business with very little incident. The locals use it to cut time off their commute to and from work almost daily. The one time it isn't used by anyone is when the moon is full on a clear night. Under the light of the moon, the concrete disappears and an old dirt road can be seen in its place. No one knows how long this phenomenon has been occurring, but tales of its appearance go back at least 200 years, before there was even a road to be traveled. The first recorded sighting was listed in an old record book from the founding of a nearby town. The writer, most likely a town official, noted a report of a strange road appearing to a couple out for a horseback ride through the countryside. They said they were enjoying the cool air late on an evening in July of 1823 when they spotted what looked like a path in the distance. Approaching the path, the couple were startled to hear what sounded like a group of people shouting off in the distance. This seemed to startle their horses and they decided to turn back and report the instance to the sheriff the next morning. By the time anyone made it to the area the next day, the road had vanished. Over the years, much of the land was bought up and turned into farmland. A state highway was built through the area to allow for faster travel between outlying areas and the capital city of Columbus. During construction of the state highway, the engineer responsible for the project proposed a side road to link with another state route. This would be a simple county road named for the grid zone it was being built in, Zone 18, Road 9, better known as County Road 189. No one knew at the time what this road would become. The only known oddity was the young couple seeing what looked to be a road, but that story had been more or less forgotten by the time construction began. Construction of the road went smoothly with one big incident of note. Two weeks into the project, the workers showed up to start their day and found that all of the equipment they had been using was damaged beyond repair. Vehicles were on their sides or roofs, engines were laying on the ground, tools were broken in half. The foreman filed a report with the company and police stating that obviously there had been a group of vandals out the previous night and he wanted them all brought to justice. Despite a thorough investigation, no one was ever arrested. A night watchman was assigned to the site, but nothing else happened in the final couple of weeks and the crew moved on. Other tales are told, mostly to scare away would-be adventurers. Locals will tell of screams and growls they have heard when driving by late at night but none of these stories are ever really taken seriously by the passers-by who are listening. Though there are many claims of the road taking victims, there is only one true case of this happening. In 1989, a family of four was traveling through the area on their way to visit family in Indiana. The father, Stuart, thought the road looked like a good shortcut to take some time off the trip. Turning onto the two-lane concrete road as the sun began sinking below the horizon, he couldn't have known what terror was about to befall his family. As the sun fully set and the moon rose into the eastern sky, the road turned into gravel and dirt. Stewart's wife, Molly, was beginning to worry they had taken a wrong turn and urged Stewart to turn around. He pointed out there was nowhere he could stop as the road was too narrow and reassured her that they would be back on concrete at any moment. An hour into the drive, however, he began to have second thoughts. The road couldn't have been more than a mile or two long, but it felt like they had been going for at least 20 miles, with no sign of another road or even a driveway. Stuart was trying to remain calm for his family, but the kids were starting to grow restless and Molly was getting more and more nervous. On top of everything, the car was below a quarter tank of gas, and they wouldn't be able to go much longer without some fuel. As they came over the crest of a hill, a driveway on the left-hand side of the road brought some welcome relief. It might take some time to backtrack, but there was no way to know how much longer the road would go on if they kept going in the same direction. Turning around in the driveway, Stuart heard Molly sigh with relief as they began heading back the way they came. The miles slowly ticked by, but even after another three hours of driving, they had not reached the road. More than that, they were still on gravel and dirt. Stuart began to panic as he looked down at the gas gauge and realized the needle was sitting on E, meaning the engine would be dying at any moment. Before he could even fully process this fact, 
The radio turned itself on, and a noise that sounded like hundreds of people screaming in pain started pouring from the speakers. Afraid the kids would wait, Stuart tried to turn off the radio, but the dials were having no effect. As he struggled to figure out how to make the sound stop, the engine died and the car rolled to a standstill. He was trying to remain outwardly calm, but that facade was fading more and more as he looked around, trying to identify any recognizable landmarks that would signal they were close enough to the road to walk. As he looked out the back window, he realized the children were no longer in their seats. The blood drained from his face as he began frantically searching the back seat, and Molly started sobbing uncontrollably beside him. Climbing out of the car, Stuart raced to open the trunk, hoping the children had maybe climbed through the fold-down seat into the storage area. This, too, would be a dead end in his search. Looking around, he realized the night had become eerily quiet. Where only a couple of moments prior he had heard Molly screaming, there was now only silence. He crept back around the car to look for her, but she too was now missing. As he walked around in the darkness near the car, he screamed Molly and the kids' names into the cold night. Hours passed as he wandered through the fields in force, his voice fading more and more. The sunrise never came. But Stuart knew time was passing as he could feel himself growing weaker and weaker. He wasn't sure exactly how long he had been wandering, and he was beginning to forget what he was looking for. The forests and hills and fields seemed never-ending, but he kept walking and searching for anything. Cresting a hill as he came out of a forest, he looked up and spotted a light in the distance. Though he was still quite far from it, he could tell it was from a small cottage on the other side of a field. A small glimmer of hope drove him forward, forcing his feet to move ever faster as he made his way toward the light. Reaching the door, he collapsed as he began knocking. At first, there was no sign that anyone was home. After a few short moments, however, a noise inside the building indicated that someone had heard him and was making their way to the door. As it opened, a bright light blinded Stuart and he passed out. A state trooper found the car three days after the family was reported missing. It appeared Stewart had fallen asleep at the wheel and wrapped the car around a large oak tree along the side of the road. All four members of the family had perished, though the coroner reported that the children appeared to have survived the initial crash and died hours later due to their injuries. The trooper that found the wreck did note in his report that the car was covered in a thick layer of dust though no one could figure out where it had come from as there was no indication the family had traveled on any dirt roads.